Uh, okay, so uh, I'll first introduce myself. Uh, I'm Rohini and uh, I'm fourth year student. I'm studying at IIT Bombay and I enjoy doing discrete mathematics. Okay, by the way, I was a member of IMOTC 2018 and 2019. Uh, and yeah, as a matter of fact, my know is the last uh, offline IMOTC. So yeah, sad things happen. Uh, but yeah, uh, I like to do discrete math, combinatorics, algorithms, anything works uh, like that. Uh, today we'll have a like, very introductory session about a uh, pigeonhole principle. I'm sure that most of you, rather all of you would have come across um, this and would have uh, done quite a lot of uh, problems based on this thing. Uh, today we'll be doing thoda basics only and uh, at the end uh, we'll be doing um, some nice things and so basically um, in today's session i aim to build up upon something so called cool and in the next session we'll be doing some uh, like uh, we'll be uh, what learning how do we tackle open problems um, so yeah a pigeon principle very simple principle if we have n plus one pigeons, uh, like uh, we are putting them into n boxes, then at least one box has more than one pigeon. Proof, you would think that is yeah, common sense ki baat hai, and yes, but yeah, you can mathematically rigorously prove this as well. Uh, and yeah, okay. So uh, yeah, the outline of today's session would be like, first we will do two uh, simple problems. Then after that we will do four problems which have appeared uh, in past IMOs, like very past IMOs. So uh, like they shouldn't be like too hard or so. Uh, and the last problem uh, will be related to Ramsey theory. And Ramsey theory is what? One of the what most untackled uh, domains in mathematics. And uh, I mean, there are quite a lot of open problems in mathematics and Ramsey theory arises out of pigeonhole principle. So uh, yeah, we'll work on that uh, slightly. And uh, so, okay, my background, I have been uh, working on a couple of um, open problems in Ramsey theory for the past few months. Uh, so yeah, in the next session, we'll discuss uh, what we are discovering in Ramsey theory. Uh, yeah, so first two problems, uh, many of you, would have seen them, but I have something to mention about it. So yeah, give it a try and let me know once you are done.
Okay, uh, anyone is done with uh, these two problems? Uh, so first one is the famous problem of Herodotus, and uh, you can uh, replace, okay, it, here is the end. You can replace 101 by M and plus one, and um, you can, what? Replace 90 by M and N minus one respectively. Okay, any progress by anyone? Oh, anyone who is uh, stuck with what you are doing? Anyone who didn't understand the statement of the principle? Or any worries? Uh, sorry, can you please repeat? No, it's clear. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, how did you approach the problems? Yes, I'm thinking. I'm thinking about constructing the longest increasing sequence. Mm -hmm. In first or second? 
First row. Okay. Can be done by partitioning in groups, some groups like which are increasing, some groups are decreasing. Mm -hmm. And selecting 90 numbers from such groups and applying pigeonhole, basically dividing into like boxes. Okay, can you uh, tell your precise argument? Pardon? Uh, can you tell your precise argument? I was saying that uh, can be, be done by breaking into some groups, uh, which means partitions like boxes and putting numbers in them and how, selecting how, each. Yeah, how will uh, you make question it? says randomly, so randomly like I'm still thinking on okay. the further process. Good, good. For the second one, by purely periodic, do you mean that like one, one, like there can't be any starting bit that's left over? It can't be like eventually periodic. Oh, Also, what do you mean by uh, maximum possible length of the period? Isn't it like determined already? Like just an upper bound or something? Oh. Yeah, you need to put the upper bound by PHP. Uh, so, yeah, like if we have a sequence, like then here the maximum uh, length of the uh, period is three. Oh, okay. Like for the second one, we can consider we can consider adjacent pairs, and what it has to be if adjacent pairs like f one f i f i plus one, mm -hmm. and that will eventually have to repeat more ten after hundred. Is that what you is that what that means? Like there's a maximum possible length of a hundred. Mm -hmm. Okay, the hundred ten should repeat, and uh, why so? What like, are you yeah, the hundred one doesn't have to be repeat, but like at some point, some fi f i plus one has to be congruent to f j f j plus one for some value. Yeah, and at that point, we'll get a loop. Right. Right. Makes sense. Uh, did everyone else follow the argument? Can you repeat, please? Mm, okay. Uh, would you please repeat? So, like. If we consider the pairs of the form fi, fi plus one mod 10, there are a hundred different values that this, this pair can have. And so eventually it must repeat like fi, fi plus one is congruent to fj, fj plus one. And since the since one pair determines the next uniquely, so over, like we'll have a period from there. Like order would also be taken into consideration. Like 
Yeah, yeah. Yes, order there. If F I plus one is equal to F J, then it doesn't make some sense. Yeah, yeah. It's ordered there. Okay, makes sense then. Oh, and actually, you can make it a bit more precise. Uh, that I mean, if I can take values from uh, zero to nine, and if J can take values from zero to nine, so there are hundred choices, but the pair zero zero can't occur. So actually, only ninety nine possible pairs are there. Does it make sense? Yeah. Okay. Everybody cool with it? Finite choices, finite choices. Yeah. Cool. So let's go to the first problem. But that doesn't prove that it's a purely periodic, right? Like, how how do we know that the first like there won't be some bit at the start that's left over? Uh, like two pairs will repeat, and the period of that sequence will be at the at most ninety nine. Does it make sense? Um, I I got um. Did you answer what I I like? I got disconnected. So what I asked. Oh yeah, sure. So uh, consider one of one uh consecutive uh terms. Then we have like hundred pairs, like one comma one, one comma two, two comma three, and so on. But in that thing, uh, the pair zero zero can't occur. So we have only ninety nine distinct possible choices, and uh, those two of them should repeat, and the period of uh, that uh. Sequence will be at uh, at most ninety. Yes. Yeah. But we still haven't proved that it's purely periodic, right? Oh, uh, it need not be purely periodic. Oh, in the question, it said purely periodic. Like for that, we'd have to prove that one one appears again. I think. Yeah. Oh, oh no, sorry. Not oh, really. Like, like your two three can occur also once. But yeah, but then there will be some leftover bit at the start. Like yes, one yes, one yes, will yes, never yes. appear again. Yes, there will be a leftover. Yeah, so. there is a leftover, and we don't care about that. Uh, and I mean, in general, uh, when you're dealing with any say analysis problems, uh, you really don't care what happens at the initial uh, values of the function. Uh, I mean, at initial you can have like this and this and this, and as long as it is eventually converging to a, uh, some value, like we say that this function is a good function. Or uh, that the function converges, or uh, to formalize it better, we say that um, like in major theoretic language, we say that it, it pointwise converges or it converges in major. So uh, in general, we don't care about the initial values. That as long as uh, sorry, as long as it behaves nicely, quote unquote nicely, uh, after some time, then we are happy. So yeah. Great. Like I have some idea in first problem, you know. Ah, sorry. Ah, uh, could you please repeat? Ah, uh, like I have some idea in problem one, you know. Mhm. Mm so like, ah, uh, if you can strike the ninety of these numbers, so you need to prove that at most nine, at most a subsequence of ninety terms are there such that they are not in any monotonic, and they don't have any monotonic behavior.
can you scale the empire against your first four? I'm sorry. Then you can do it by against your first four. Mm hmm. Back is and does a question on this if some number is some sequence of r minus n times s minus n plus one terms are given mm -hmm. then we can find like at uh, at least an increasing size of sequence of r terms or an decreasing sub sequence of s terms this note that here r minus n is equal to 10 and s minus 1 is equal to 10. Uh, we yeah. can do it in any order. Yes? So it we is. can guarantee like at most s here r is equal to 11 and s is equal to 11. So we it can is. get an increasing or decreasing sequence of 11 terms. Yeah, it is. But I guess there exists a proof by simple period of principle. Uh, did everyone uh, get it? No. Hmm, okay. Uh, shall I repeat? So, uh, like my argument was like slightly different. So, what we do is we uh, like we construct these. Uh, new sequences fm and uh, rm uh, such that uh, what uh, fm is the monotonically increasing sequence with last element to be equal to m that is the maximal length uh, that is possible uh, and uh, rm we denote by rm the maximal length of monotonically decreasing sequence that begins with m, okay, for any number m. So, like, suppose we have something like this, this, and suppose these guys are m, and uh, now we uh, what pick the increasing sequence, and suppose it is this, 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 this. Uh, then, like, by definition we uh, have what this is the decreasing thing so this will be fm and this will be rm uh, are the definitions clear wait what is fm and what is rm hmm. okay i i, I draw it again. one coin calling rm it should be g let's call it g okay uh, FM denotes the uh, monotonically increasing sequence, which has the last element to be equal to M. And uh, GM is the uh, what maximum length of uh, monotonically decreasing sequence, which begins with M. So if our M guy is here, uh, then the FM will have the last element to be equal to uh, M. This will be over here. And uh, GM will be decreasing sequence, which begins with uh, M. So that's the uh, GM sequence, like GM is the maximum length of the uh, thing. And now what we have is that, uh, like 
suppose there are uh, like um, two different numbers m and k and we have what uh, f m not equal to uh, f k and g m not equal to g k and like mm, okay can you prove that if Basically, is everyone uh, cool with how do we define how did we define FM and GM? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So. Oh, yes. If this FM not equal to FM makes sense, right? Yeah. Does this thing make sense to everyone? Yes. Okay. Oh, well, so. Uh, can I prove why it is? Yeah, like if uh, n is simply greater than m, then like we have this sequence first, and then we add n to it, and this will have uh, yes, yes. left one extra. And then mm, yeah. So uh, yeah, this clearly for this. Uh, now think about how many possible like lengths we have. Uh, I mean, fm gm can take how many different values. And we have total only one over one things. So see if we can get some contradiction by this. By contradiction, I mean, uh, see how we can use the Pigeon principle here. How many distinct possible choices of FM and GM we can get? Then we can get like 101 choices. Oh, sorry. For each of them, we can get 101 choices. Yeah. So, like, this will force us for some pair of an NGM to be equal. Does that make sense? Yes, yes. It is okay. Everybody cool with it? Uh, yes. So yeah. Yeah, yeah sorry to cut. Yeah. Okay, so this is a very famous result by Erodesh and one of the very famous applications of uh, the patient hall principle. Um, and yeah, but uh, I mean, the general principle, it looks very simple, very trivial, uh, but it has quite a lot of applications in very different domains. So since like right now we're doing combi, but I want you guys to do some non-combi as well. So now we will consider a few more problems such that, I mean, one problem is from algebra, one problem is from geometry, and one is from number theory. And all of them will uh, involve some thing related to Pigeon principle by definition. So, yeah, like here are what first three problems. Try whichever you like. So, like if on the side there are two vertices, then that vertice will have the same color with the a side or what? Mm, oh, in the uh, 1983 first problem? 1983 problem. Oh, yeah. So, what is the issue here? Like, I'm asking uh, here the sides are bipolar. Which color will be given to the vertices? Should it say the sides of a hex regular hexagon? Can you just show a demonstration of it?
Um, hey, sorry. Uh, can you hear me now? Am I audible? Yeah. No, okay. Yeah. Uh, can you please uh, make me the co-host? Okay. So. I do. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, sorry about that. Uh, is everyone clear with the problem statements? I suppose someone is uh, asking a query. Like in the 19 is a problem. What color is the what is? Sorry, oh, I, I didn't get your question. Yes, your voice broke in between. Like if there is a triangle ABC. Yeah. So what are, what is the color given to the vertices ABC? Yeah. No, I mean, like, that depends, right? I mean, all the points on the perimeter are, are colored, right? So what does rectangular pair, rectangular? So, so it's they are right. colored in a random way. Uh, yeah. So we have to find this one right angle triangle. This is not right angle triangle, but this right angle triangle with vertices of same color. Oh, right. Yeah. And yeah, like it is a regular triangle, right? Yeah, yeah. This, uh, like the orange triangle that I have drawn is regular triangle. And the red triangle should be a uh, right angle triangle. And the vertices have any color, blue or uh, red. Either ones. Okay. Can you show the problem straight away? Yeah. Right. The answer is no. Sorry, the answer is? The answer is no. Mm, okay. Prove it. Like there are at least two sides that are colored the same. Sorry? Like there are at least two sides of a regular triangle that are colored the same. Oh, uh, like why, I, I mean, why about the sides? Like, we can... Let's say there are two colors, red and blue, and mm -hmm. there are three sides. Then I P P H P at least two oh, sides oh, are oh. the same color. Oh, uh, like the entire side shouldn't have the same color. Like you can uh, what talk about uh, what the points. I mean, like if this point is red, yes. Then here you can have like blue as well. But like if some side is red and the vertex of the rectangle triangle lies on it. Then shouldn't that points color be same to that side's color? Oh, uh, so I mean, uh, like, uh, let me clear the like definition by coloring a side. Uh, like it does not mean that, uh, what the entire side should be yellow. It's that points on this side are colored with two colors, red and blue. So yeah, you can have stuff like this, this, this. And then some. It is radius, so. Yeah, like that. Okay, so bicolored basically means like we are coloring the points or two. Colors. Yeah, yeah. You're coloring the points. Okay, okay. Oh, is it clearer now? So you are not coloring the whole side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are not coloring the oh. entire side with one color, just the points. Is that clear now? It's still clearly like two points will be having the same color due to pH. Mm. What two points will have the same color?
let's say there are three particles right oh, so okay. we can Original. yes yes yeah. like there are three particles and we have at most two colors red and blue yeah so out of these three vertices two vertices should be of the same color uh yeah these two are red and this is say purple right? yes so we are done so what is the issue like the issue is we wanted the monochromatic vertices on all three sides but they all have the same color uh, like at least two have the same color and these two are connected so we are done Oh, oh no, oh, let me show a construction, which is a valid construction. This is our equilateral triangle. We have our sides to be rand, uh, what? The points are randomly colored. Red, blue, red, blue, and so on. And what we have is that this point is blue. So we do this. Do this. This is blue. This is blue. This is blue. And this angle is 90 degrees. This is the requirement. Oh, oh I really messed up the definition of yes. monochromatic. Sorry. Clear to everyone now? The statement? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Great. Yeah. Like if if on some side there are two vertices of the same color for both colors, like there's two or two points that are red and there are two points that are blue at least mm -hmm. of each. Yeah. Then if you project onto the other sides like vertically up, those points would have to be the same color as the ones on the ground on the flat one. And you can mm -hmm. do that for each side. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can and you can work so. backwards as well. So yeah, these uh, two are points of different color on one side and. These two are different. Uh, what should I do next? Like uh, on the bottom side, you have two points of color red. Mm -hmm. So now, if I draw a vertical on either of them, it'll intersect the regular triangle at some other point. Uh, how should I draw the line? Uh, well, uh, perpendicular to the uh, perpendicular okay. to the side. And then that must be blue. Yeah. Okay. Then both Those the points must be blue. blue. Yeah, and we have that for all the points on the thing. This is blue, this is blue. What next? And, and we also have that if from that, from any point we draw a perpendicular, it must be the opposite color, just by the inverse. As long as the side is not such that. Yeah. Uh, what I meant is oh, at yes. the red, we draw a perpendicular to each of the sides. Those must be blue as well. Okay, let me draw a better red. So both the points are blue. Now we draw a perpendicular to this. And to this. But what do we get by that? Because what I actually I, meant was backwards that if you draw a perpendicular from the red onto each either of the sides, you'd get a blue as well. From red to uh, how do you do uh, either of the sides? Uh, a perpendicular from either of the red points to yeah, and you get a blue point because mm -hmm. as long as that side has this property that there's at least two of each color. Uh, what if this point is red? Why can't this be red? Oh, what if if it was red, then red? we can choose another red on that side and we do the contraction. Oh, so yeah, as long as there's two of each. Yeah, as, as long as they're both. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so case one, we have like one side to be what? complete Of completely blue things. Yeah. 
in that case at least one point oh yeah in that case is it like very simple like choose some other blue point somewhere on either of the two sides and draw a perpendicular from that and that this point again will be blue and again this random point is blue so we get a blue triangle is it yeah. true yeah so Wait, but it can that... be like the other two sides are fully red right 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 so is everyone cool that this point should be blue yes mm, yeah which point oh uh, this point okay okay yeah yeah and similarly we draw a perpendicular here as well and uh, by the same logic we can get a blue point here so essentially uh, we have come up with four blue points what next Just note that in this case, since two sides are fully blue and the third side is fully red, you can find a regular triangle. Um, only I am able to what hear very faintly, or is everyone facing facing an issue? Let me just uh, swap my screen. Okay. Uh, can you repeat now? Am I audible right now? Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. oh yeah, great. I can hear better. Yeah, sorry about the echo. Oh, uh, yeah, sorry. You're saying something. I hope I can hear better now. Let's say they get a construction for a triangle where it doesn't work. Like two sides are colored fully blue and the other side is colored fully red. Mm -hmm. So in that case, yeah. you can't even find a simple triangle with monochromatic vertices. But like it's bicolored, right? Like each side is bicolored. Not very yeah, like each side should have, yeah. Like we have a variation or we can get a pure of one color. Yeah, like like each side should contain what? Okay. At least okay. Like what are you planning to do with the vertex? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah, like if this is what say blue. I mean, yeah. In either case, you can get it right. If it is blue, then this is the triangle, and if this is red, then you have to work with this. But yeah, no, the question says that each uh, side should contain what at least two points of the like at least two, like both the colors.
Like we can give three pairing of same colors on two sides, right? From these three pairings, we can at least get like uh, three points uh, which are perpendicular. And from these three points, you can find at least two of the same color. And by finding these two of the same color, we can just turn to the another and we are done. Mm -hmm. Let's say a triangle. Yes. Like we can at least find on two sides two, two points of the same color, red, red. Okay, fine. On two sides, I'm saying, like on two distinct sides. Yes. So which ones do you want? Like the base with that another any other side. Like can you just name the triangle so it's very easy in oh, yes. So we can find two points on A, B, and B C so that they are of the same color. Okay, sure. So we okay. take like those two points. Yeah, of the same color. Right? Yes, and we draw perpendicular to any of those two points. So we get two choices of points, right? Mm, yeah, like draw all the perpendicular? Yes, draw all the perpendicular. No, 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 not from the end. Oh, then. Yes, from the okay. oh, oh, Were these three lines cut up? Yes, yes. And we just established that uh, these three points should be. At least two of them are the, uh, the same color, right? Oh, we established that all of them should be blue, right? Yes, let's By establish the, this. This is the worst one. possible case. Right? Yeah. So we take that blue one and then we draw the other three possible perpendiculars. Oh, from Q. Right. From Q, Q or RR? From Q. Okay. Where R would work, not Q. We can't sort of find like on the same side of the word R. Three yeah. possible perpendiculars. So we draw it. Can you draw three possible perpendiculars too? And similarly, draw from this AB now, like draw from a red point on AB. Okay. In the worst case so, scenario, all these three, three, three will have the same, and we can just then find those three, and we can just connect them. So we are done. Okay, just a second. Let me choose randomly two points on AB, and let me repeat the procedure. Yes, for sure. Like in the worst possible scenario, all these three of all of them are blue. Okay. Yeah. So like we can now just choose any three of the blue, like say the one near A, the one near Q and one near S. Okay. One near A. Okay. No, no, no. The blue point near A. Uh, this yes, one? F, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. This one and? And the one near S. One near S, okay. Yes. And the one near to Q. One near Q, this one? No, no, no. Or the, on the yes. other side. No, no, no. The between yes. one of those two. This one? Are it, no, no. Like, there is Q and there are two blue points near it. Take the other one. This one? No, no, no not this one. Like, there is okay. the red point Q, okay? Yeah. And there goes two perpendiculars from R to the side BC. Yeah. So take the one that, yes, yes. Uh, on the left left of Q. This one? Yep, yep. Now join okay. these three. These three are perpendicular. Uh, like we need four, uh, yeah, sorry, three uh, points. And you claim that this is a right angle. 
Yes, yes. More clearly, FG is right angle. Okay. How do you prove that? Wait, can you give me a second? Oh, we can do it by the parallels, right? Like ER is parallel to the perpendicular from that goes from G. And yeah. similarly, FR is parallel to the perpendicular that goes from Should we do with this blue triangle? Uh, I'm having trouble with this. Yeah. Am I in the right way or have I done some mistake? Um, like with our idea, we can also just at any point on the thing that's red, we can drop a particular upwards to that side. We'll get a blue, then drop a particular to that side to get a red, and then come back to the side to get a blue. So we'll get a unique pairing in that way. So red, blue, red, blue. Like and then each of those. I think it seems strong. Would you label things? Uh, I think. Okay. Um. So if we have some red point on some side R, then and we draw perpendicular to that side at R, then we'll get a point B. Mm -hmm. Then do draw perpendicular. Or do you want me to draw another diagram? Um, fine. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, we have point R, which is blue. What next? Point R that's red. Okay. Uh, okay. okay sorry. Then if we draw the perpendicular upwards to AC, it intersects at some point. Mm -hmm. Say X. And we draw perpendicular. Oh, it doesn't necessarily. Okay, we draw perpendicular from that point onto AB. And this point should be blue, no? Yeah, it should be the same color, yeah, as R. And then we draw a perpendicular back and we'll get, and like this is the unique. So we'll have like some inverses, red, blue, like there's some mapping.
and they'll have to be of opposite color if one is red then the other is blue yeah uh, what next then draw another perpendicular from r to ab from r to ab oh like now you want to move in the opposite direction yes oh okay cool now say this is red in the worst case scenario right uh, yeah and now draw a perpendicular from this to ac In the worst case scenario, this is blue. Mm, yep. So now the claim is QTR is right angle. Okay. Is this your claim, Sadar? Hello. I didn't have a claim, but <laughs> that's that is. Oh, we have came to the same thing again. <laughs> What if we instead assume that CP is equal to 2 AP? Then like the perpendiculars are very nice. Because then uh, RQ becomes perpendicular to AP. Uh, good observation that we somehow want to have a good looking hexagon. This might not always work for all uh, P, Q, R, S, P, R dash, but yeah, what if we work on only with the regular? So yeah, how would you like to draw the uh, hexagon? A bigger point with the ratio 2 is to 1. Oh, uh, like the midpoint? Uh, 2 is to 1. So, like a bit more. Mm, yeah, fine. Like everywhere? Uh, no, just one such point. Mm, yeah. That's. Oh, everywhere actually makes so much sense. Mm, and by what color shall I mark? Or, okay, like. For now, I uh, green. Uh, why every each one of them should be uh, blue? No, no, just like one of them blue. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, green. What are the two colors? Uh, blue and red. I mean, I'm just marking it and we'll label color to these. Hmm. Okay. So one of them is blue. Great. What next? Uh, then the corresponding thing on the other side, that's red. Mm, so, uh, yeah, like how uh, you have to use some geometric property. How will this perpendicular over this guy will go? Will it pass from the green point? It wouldn't, right? It, no, like to the other side, it will. Mm -hmm. This thing, you mean? Or this yeah, thing? no, that. This thing. Yeah. Mm, yeah. And how do you prove that? This is 3698 right? Yeah. Yeah. So that makes this point to be red. What next? And we take that uh, projection onto the base. Mm, yeah. Again, we come up with another 3698 angle. So this is blue. Next. Uh, and then back to the original side. Mm, yeah. And now this will pass through this. And uh, this can't be both red and blue, and we get a contradiction, right? Everyone cool with it? Or can you just read the argument? Mm, yeah. But, uh, I'll just repeat that. Uh, what can't be all uh, blue and red? And get it. Mm, okay. So, uh, are, are you cool that if we assume P to be red, 
then q should be sorry if p is blue then q should be red and r should be blue yeah yeah okay i got it works right because on a base you can find at least two points at the same figure yeah so okay like our first lemma was that uh suppose this is the triangle and we have this point over here then so uh, if if this point is red and if we draw perpendicular like this then this point should be blue uh th this point should be blue is our lemma like if uh, it is red then we can have some other red point over here and this is also red so this will be like this will be the red chromatic triangle and will be done so we yeah want... so we assume like one another, another mm, yeah great so this point is blue uh we repeat that argument like since this point is blue we get this to be uh, like p is blue so q should be red and since q is red r should be blue but r is blue then p can't be red again is that okay yes yeah okay so okay let's just quickly summarize this problem that is the post post lemma that we did uh, then we came up with some hexagon but that hexagon wasn't good enough so we need to find some good enough hexagon you are know, you are proving the same or did you just use two alternate combinatorial argument oh no no my proof was exactly the uh, same so we needed to look for a construction here right yeah yeah okay. and then choose a point with two is to one relation uh my, my proof was not like my argument was like not exactly the the same but the idea was the same so uh okay for for the sake of completeness i'll just tell my idea as well so this is the triangle that we have and these are the six points of like the regular six points that you care about then uh, what we prove is that there exist a right triangle uh, uh, sorry like there exist two of such uh, vertices which are of the same color and the third one will do the job so like consider uh, any two opposite vertices like this and diametrically opposite vertex this then uh, prove that uh, like one of them should i mean at least one pair should uh, be such that like both the opposite vertices are, are of the same color and then use the same argument and here essentially we are doing the same thing 
Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. So did everyone get uh, how we did? Uh, is everyone comfortable with uh, IMO 1983-P1? Yes. Okay. yes. Okay, great. So now which one do you want to try? Uh, 87 or 72? 72 is easy. Let's see what it is. Mm, 87 is easy, but okay. Okay, 72 is very easy. Fine. We'll do one of them uh, now and uh, we'll do other uh, some other time. Which one are we doing? Which one you like? In either case, we'll do the other one in the next session. Oh, okay. Can you get the proof for 1972? Hmm? Can you get the proof for 1972? Oh, as in, you want the solution? No, like, the proof. Uh, like, try to. Okay. Yeah, 72 is easier than 80. So for the 87 one, if we consider all possible combinations when each AI is a positive integer, like non-negative integer at most k minus one and not all zero, yeah. then there are k to the n minus one of them. And maximum sum is k minus one into n by two ten. Yeah. So sum to our getting this root n thing. Uh, like to minimize it when like all of them are k minus one, all of the xi must be uh root 10, one by root 10, like probably by QMA or something. Mm, fine, but like which inequality are you using? Uh, the sum of xi square is greater yeah, than yeah. sum of x square by n. Sum of xi bracket square or sum of xi square? Which one? Uh, n times the right hand side is greater than the left hand side. Uh, this thing? Yeah. This thing right is, hand side is greater. No, right hand side is greater than the left hand side. Okay, this? Uh, no, the other way and uh, by n. This? I think so. Mm -hmm. 
because yes, we have is. some yes, yes. Yeah. Some here as well. Okay, what next? So the maximum sum you can have is then like all of the AIR K minus one, in which mm-hmm. case the maximum sum is K minus one into root n. Mm, yeah. So okay, great. Then just multiply all the ones, a n by k, k to the n minus one. Mm-hmm. So we are done with the construction. Mm, yeah. Oh, so like, uh, can you put it in better way? Like, uh, we can what partition this interval of k raised to n minus one. Like or... we had all the ones are equal to k minus one. Yeah. Due to the worst possible case scenario. Right. Uh, then we had the modulus of me smaller than. Uh, smaller than equal to k minus one times root n, right? Right, right. Then we just divide all a one, a i is by k to the n minus one. Yeah. And all of them will be smaller than equal to k minus one since k is greater than equal to two and it is an integer. Mm-hmm. Yes. So we are done. Yeah. Great. Cool. Perfect. Everyone cool with it? Yeah. Okay. Like the biggest part was that not seeing the inequality at all. Right. Cool. Interesting. Nice. Okay, so yeah, we are done with 87. 72 is easier. So, uh, do you guys want to do 72 or you want to get going? Okay, yeah. uh, let's try maybe 72 for like five minutes. Yeah, I got it. Mm. You got the 72. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, like we can, like, let us make the set of the 10 two digit numbers. Then there are two, two raised to 10 minus two subsets of S, which are non empty and not S. And this is 1022, but some can be yeah. some is yeah. less than 1000. But we need to find this joint subset, right? Uh, yeah, like the maximum sum would be 91 plus 92 up till 99, which is 945. And which is less than uh, 2 raised to 10 minus 1. Yeah. But we need to find two disjoint subsets, right? 2 to the 10 is formula for phone number uh, subsets. Yeah. So yeah, we need to find this joint, like we just yeah, keep removing the common element. Yes, yes. Yeah. Everyone cool with it? Yes. Okay, so uh like one from geometry, one from algebra, one from number theory. I guess we are done. So the actual thing that I wanted to uh yeah, tell about. So uh, we'll not discuss this problem right now. Try this IMO shortlist 2016. And in the next uh, session, we'll do some Ramsey theory. In the next session, what we'll do? Uh, Ramsey theory. Uh-huh. Okay, so uh, let me introduce what Ramsey theory is. So uh, this like very easy problem from economics or like sociology, whatever goes like, suppose there are six people, then uh, they're either friends or strangers, then we should uh, like, then there is there are at least three people who mutually know each other. 
or there are three people who do not know each other and we can put it into what graph theoretic uh, language like uh, suppose we have like six vertices then there exists uh, and like if uh, two people are friends then we uh, draw a line by blue that is friends and if there are enemies we draw the line by green enemies and what we have to show that the there is at least uh, one monochromatic blue triangle or a green triangle is that it uh, can you just quickly prove that If you take any vertex, at least three of them are the same color of the edges that are coming out of it. Yeah. And then those three can't be connected by any of those colors, so they all have to form a monochromatic triangle oh, of the yes. other color. Yeah. So like if this is green, then we have one triangle, and similarly this is green, and this is green, then we get like green triangle. And if all of them are blue, then we get this to be a blue triangle. Okay. Yeah. So this is the like basic problem that um yeah um that is we call this as R three three Ramsey three three uh R three three means like um uh, in a what in a three plus three colored graph there are there is at least one graph oh uh, like okay let me introduce what is K N so K N is complete graph on n vertices. So, for uh, okay, when n equal to four, k n is this complete thing. So, like all uh, two vertices should be joined by an edge. K five is a pentagon, and yeah, you can imagine in that. Yeah. So, a formal definition of R M N is that it should have at least K M or K N. So R M N is the least positive integer, such that a graph, a bicolored graph on R M N vertices will have either K M or K N. That is the definition. And the uh, like the proof is very easy for K three three as we saw right now, and it uses the Peterson principle. But the pro uh, problem gets insanely tough when we are working with larger numbers. We know some cool bounds about what R four four, R five five, but yeah, when we. Oh, uh, your voice decreased. Like it's very low. Yes, it's okay now. We uh, we are working on K three three, but as we like K uh, sorry uh, R three three, uh, R four four, R five five. We know the answer for R five five. We know the bounds that it is between forty and forty eight, but as the numbers increase, this is what insanely tough problem, and um, this is like open problem for quite a lot of years. So in the next session, we'll be uh, discussing how do we. Can you we... just tell what the scheme or K M denotes? Again, sorry for asking. That. Yeah, sure, sure, no worries. Uh, by K M, it means complete graph on M vertices. So suppose you have one, two, three. So the M edges have the same color, right? Oh uh, no, no. Like this, if this is the like graph on what M things, then all the vertices should be connected. Oh, so they are all connected to each other. All of them should be of the same color. Okay. Yeah, I don't want to make it messy, but I hope yeah, it serves the purpose. Uh, also, how do you define R of M command? Oh, uh, okay. Shall I give the formal definition? Yes.
uh, do you know what bicoloring is? So suppose there are k vertices, then what? Uh, each edge will have either red or blue color. That is bicoloring. Definition of okay. Yes. So to illustrate, let's choose n equal to n equal to three. Uh, now, uh, like let us consider some coloring of pentagon. Now this thing has no monochromatic blue triangle or red triangle, right? So we know that right? Because it doesn't have a yes. and here we show that we showed that any uh what by coloring of six vertices will have uh, a monochromatic red triangle or uh, blue triangle so that r of three three equals six yeah so r three three equal to six okay yeah so the famous problem that we are going to consider is how to generalize this thing for what larger values of m and n or what if we allow what more than two colors or what if we don't just work with KMKN but have some other special function? Then how do things uh, how do things proceed? So we'll be what looking into that in the next session. Okay. So this session has ended now. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, we'll also discuss this problem. Uh, I'm a set twenty sixteen. So right now. Uh, Oh, no, no, no. Oh, next time. You can okay. just uh, take a screenshot of it and yeah, you can do this. Thank you. Okay, so shall we stop for today? Yeah, thank you for the class. Yeah, thanks a lot.